Hi and welcome to our lesson on Grade 11 Word Processing, Templates, Forms and Other Data. So luckily for us, it's not necessary to reinvent the wheel every time we want to create a word processing document. There's many, many templates available um, online or even built into our uh, software sometimes that you can use to customize to suit your own needs. So for instance, if we have a look at this one, it's a meeting agenda, so if ever you have to call a meeting, you don't need to go and create this layout. You can just go and download it from the internet, and then you can go and customize the information. So you can go add the location, and you can type in all the information, the topics for the agenda, the presenter, etc., etc. Let's have a look at another one. Here is a template that could be used for buzzword bingo, and obviously you can add your own words here. If you decide for your chess club that you want to play bingo, you can put all kinds of words in there that would interest that specific group of people. But the point is you won't have to go and insert the table and do all the editing around it. You can just go and change the information to suit your needs. Right, let's look at, it, at another one. Here is a CV template, and this is something that's so important these days. Your, C you, this, your CV is what represents you when you are applying for a job or applying to go to university. So it's important to get this right, and there's lots of templates. So you can spend your time going through some templates and um, try and find something that will work for you. So for instance, here, there's one that you can actually you can go and select the date. You can add your own picture, and then they help you. They give you some advice here. They're like, what are your objectives? What was your education, your experience, your skills? Um, so they actually guide you as well as to what kind of information you should, should be putting into a template. So just keep that in mind. And remember to find templates, you'll select File. You'll select New. And then you can go and browse through the different templates over here. And if there's something specific that you're looking for, you can type that in and it will sh search for templates online. So it's obviously best if you have an internet connection because then you're going to get a lot of information that you can work with. Okay, so that's our templates and we're now going to move on to something called an electronic form. At this point, we've been creating Word documents and some forms as well. We use tabs to create lines, you've inserted tables for people to print out and then for people to fill in as well. So instead of printing out the document, you can create an electronic copy that you can email to someone um, and they can fill in their details on your form. Now you might think to yourself, well, I've tried that before and then they mess up the layout or they delete stuff that they're not supposed to delete. But in Office 2010, as well as in Open Office Writer, there is a function that you can use to create an electronic form that will be user-friendly enough for every, anyone to use so that they won't mess up your form. Okay, so what we're going to do is I've got a simple little document here and we're going to create a form. Now usually we use tabs and we create a line for them to type their name on, but that's not what we're going to do now. We're going to go to our developer tab. Now you'll see here the developer tab isn't visible at the moment. And you'll probably find this on your computer as well. If this happens, just select File, go to Options, and then we're going to go to Customize Ribbon because we need to add this feature. And on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see here's Developer. It hasn't been ticked. And we're going to tick it now and just select OK. And that's because most people don't really use the Developer tab ever but now you know about it. So there's my developer tab and here in the middle section, this is what we're going to work with at the moment. This is our control section, okay, where you can add all kinds of controls and there's a legacy tools button that you can use as well. There's some nice new commands or controls that you can add. It doesn't really matter which one, which one you use as long as the um, data type is correct. Okay, so let's have a look at what I'm talking about here. So for name, we want them to insert text. Okay, so you've got your rich text context, uh, content control, or you could have them add plain text, so no formatting or anything, or you can use your legacy forms. It's exactly the same thing. And here is a text form field. And that's the one I'm going to add. 
as that's the one that they still examine. So I'm going to insert that, and you should see a little grayed out area. Okay, we're going to do the same with surname quickly. We're going to add text. And then for grade, we're going to use something called a drop down form field. So we're going to create a drop down in Word so they can select the grade from a list instead of having to type in the information. Right, will you donate? So that's a yes no question. So I'm going to add a little checkbox form field there. Amount, okay, that will be text again. So text, and then the date of payment, you'll see there's a date picker option or date picker control here, and I'm going to add that to my form as well. Okay, now at this point, just like in Excel and in Access, you need to go and format these fields that we've inserted. Okay, so to do this, you're going to double click on the field that you've inserted, and the text form field options will appear. I'm going to say I want regular text here, and for instance, what you could do here is you could say, listen, I'm not going to make it unlimited text. You can only type in 20 characters, and you could even change the text format, and you could say, right, make every, or use, let's use title case. If they type in more than one name, the first letter of every name will be a capital letter. Okay, and there's all kinds of other settings that you can look at here. You can even add some help text. So if they're not sure what to do, the help text will appear either at the bottom of your screen or when you press F1 on your keyboard. Okay, I'm going to select OK. It will be the similar settings for surname. Now, grade is the one where we had the drop down that we added. So if I double click on this, you can either double click, by the way, or you can right click and select properties. There's my properties. It's going to look slightly different. So now we're going to add different drop-down items. So grade 8 or grade 9. And I'm going to add one more, grade 10. Okay, and we're going to add that. So you're not going to see it on your screen now. Okay, it's just going to show you the first entry that you've in, uh, inserted. When we protect the form later on, you'll be able to see um, what it's going to look like for the end user. It's similar to working in design view and data sheet view like you would in Access. Right, will you donate? That's a, a tick box. We can leave that alone for now. Now, amount shouldn't be text. It should preferably be a number. Okay, so they're going to type in what amount they're going to uh, donate, and you can even select the format as well. So there's my currency format that I could add to that particular field. Okay, and then my date picker is just a little calendar that you can use to pick the date. Now at this point, um, you shouldn't really give it to anyone to uh, complete just yet. So very important, we're now going to restrict the editing on this. If you were to just hand it to someone now, they will still be able to go and go change your labels here. So they might delete the name by accident, and they might delete some of your fields, and then it's just a, a disaster. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go to your Developer tab again, and you're going to select Restrict Editing. On the right-hand side of your screen, this little pane will appear, and you need to go to the second option, which says Editing Restrictions. Tick the box, allow only this type of editing, and there's a drop down here. And because we're working with electronic forms, we're going to select filling in forms. So we're going to restrict the people to filling in the form. They're not allowed to make any other changes. And then you're going to say yes, protect the form. You can add a password, but please don't add a password if you're not going to write it down or remember what it is or if it's your exam and they haven't specified that you have to add a password, because if they can't open it up, they won't be able to allocate marks. Okay, so I'm not going to add a password, too, da too dangerous, I'm just going to say okay. Right, at this point, if I try and click on name to make a change to it, I can't because my form is now protected, but I can go and add some names here, okay? And let's give her a second name as well. Right, and you can see how this goes. You can add a surname. If you now look at your grade field, there's a little drop down that we uh, created, and you can select the correct grade. You can either tick the box or untick, and then you can also type in your donation. 
and here you can pick the date of payments. Okay, right, so very useful tool. Uh, you can send this out to people, they can fill it in, and they can email it back to you. This also links to, or doesn't link to, but it's similar to something that you would use in Google Docs, um, where you would also send a form to, to someone to be filled in. That just takes it a step further because it will record the information for you as well. Okay, if you want to make changes to your document again, then you can just go and stop the protection over here, and you can go back and design the rest of your electronic form. Okay, in Open Office Writer, I'm just quickly going to go jump to Open Office Writer quickly. Here's a form that I started creating in Open Office Writer. Just take note of where to find this. So you're going to go to uh, Tools, and then you're going to select Options. Then you're going to go to your Load Save section. And you have to make sure that HTML compatibility has been loaded. Okay, if that hasn't been done, if you haven't followed these steps, then you're not going to be able to create your um, electronic form. Okay, so let's just say okay. Right, and now you can go and add your fields. I've already added some text boxes for name, surname, my little tick box for will you donate. Uh, I can go to amount now, and you're going to select view. And you're going to make sure that your toolbar's on. Okay, so just make sure, go to View Toolbars, and make sure your Form Control uh, Toolbar has been selected so you can actually see it over here. All right, let's just make it bigger so you can actually see what it looks like. Okay. Right, and then I'm going to switch on design mode because now I want to make changes to the design. So select design and you'll see that all these controls will now become available. It looks very similar to the ones that we saw in Office 2010. So for instance, here's your text box, a label, your combo box and list boxes, option buttons, etc., etc. And there's even more controls if you click on more controls. Like, for instance, it should have a date field as well. So you could add a date field uh, similar to what we've done with the date picker in Office 2010. Okay, so it's just important here that you know where to go look for all your menus and to activate the menus uh, before you start creating your electronic form. Okay, right. Then also, once you have created a Word document, I'm just going to skip back to Office 2010. Once you've created a form, or any Word document for that matter, you might want to export it. You might want to send it or save it in a different format. And that's easy enough to do. You'll select File, and you'll go to Save As. And you can change the type of document where it says Save As Type. And you'll see there's a bunch of different things that you can select. There's my PDF option. Another popular option is plain text, so you don't want to save any of the formatting, you just want to save the actual text within the um, document. You can do that as well. And the reason why you would do that is, once again, perhaps if you send it to someone, they might not have the newest version of Word, um, and you could send it as a text file. They can open it in WordPad that comes standard with most operating systems, and at least they'll be able to view the information. Right, and that concludes our lesson on te templates, forms, and other data.